This video is going to look at processing a low contrast image and trying to bring some life back to it. This is the image that I'm talking about. It was taken on a, an overcast grey day and uh, for a club uh, Facebook topic of looking up. As you can see it is quite grey, quite low contrast and putting a bit of contrast will put some oomph into the clouds and make the image somewhat better. I intend to look at four different ways of trying to generate a higher contrast image and get some texture back into the sky of this photo and I'm going to repeat those on three different packages. I'm going to do it in Capture One, Affinity Photo and the GIMP. And the idea is to show that although we have quite different photographic processing packages, each one is capable of very similar uh, adjustments and very similar output. An interesting little exercise and it means if you're looking at photographic processing software don't be too worried. All the good ones are capable of quite competent output even things like the GIMP, which is free open source software. Here we are in Capture One with our image loaded. I'll get rid of the banner so we don't need that. Now on the left hand side up the top we have our histogram of what our final uh, output will be and if we look at this histogram what we can see is most of the image is in a very narrow range, probably a third, possibly even as low as a quarter of the available range between black on the left and white on the right is actually used. It's just this mid-grey region. Now, for adjustments in this so we can go back to the original image easily, because if I just do a basic adjustment with it, it's going to affect the whole image. I will do this on layers. I'll open the Layers tab and to do an adjustment on a layer I'll need to add a filled layer. What that means is it, it will, it's filled so it will work on the whole image because these layers have masks and they can be used to work on part of the image. So our first adjustment we'll try is contrast. We'll increase the contrast now what contrast does is expands, so if we have something uh, sort of mid way between grey and white, it'll push it out towards the white. If it's midway between grey and black, it'll push it out towards the black. So in the middle it doesn't move it much, each side it pushes further and further out. Uh, that's not, that's had an effect and we probably want to darken it off a little bit but probably not as much as we really want. So let's try a second layer on that and we'll add some more contrast in. And we also need to bring our brightness down. So this one I've got to do two adjustments to get it right or get it where we want it. And that's probably not too bad. So let's label these two layers so we know where we are. Contrast and and contrast. So we have two contrast layers. That's one way of adjusting the contrast in an image, just simply using the contrast slider. In this case you can see we had to have a couple of goes at it because one go didn't quite give us enough. Let's move on to another way of handling it. We'll do it on a new layer and what we're going to do with this layer let's just get rid of a couple of those uh, we're going to have a look at levels and with our levels control so we've got a little histogram as a guidance and we've got some handles see on the black the handles are black, on the white the handles are white. The top ones are our output. 
So if I wind the top white one back, it means that our white point is actually going to be grey. Not a good idea. If we wind the left one up, it means our blacks are going to be grey. So normally we'd leave those top two alone in this one. And the bottom ones, if we move our white one over to where our contrast is, we look up here, we've actually moved that that edge from three quarters of the way up up towards the top. And that's taken the whites and moved them from grey over much closer to a white. If we take the black one, we can bring the black one up and put some real contrast back into those clouds. And very simply with one control we've now spread it out nicely. I don't want to go too much further. These areas should have a bit of grey in them and we'll make them too black. So you can take them right up and make them black. We don't really want them properly black. So there we are. A simple adjustment one off using levels. So level, so we know what we've done there. Uh, we'll do the next adjust way of adjusting it. We'll just turn that off so we go back to our original. And I'll do it as a new layer. And we're going to use curves. <laughs> hmm, Mr. mistyped, didn't I? So this will be a curves layer rather than an herbs layer. Coming down, so that was our levels. Our curves is a favourite tool for many people. I've often done a lot of levels adjustment rather than curves. and found it a bit easier. Now curves has a couple of ways of doing things. The default is Luma, which is the lightness level. And again, if I so black on the in, uh, so the bottom is the input and the top is the output so if I want the output to be, remain white I keep that up there and as I drag it over we can see we've got a little bar down there and that's went over, over it that's telling me where we are and if I grab the bottom one and pull it back you can see very very similar effect what we had with levels and in fact the whole way it's working is very much like the levels. So a very simple adjustment and we've got our contrast back. That's with Luma. I'll just do a reset. RGB, we can do the same thing with RGB. Bring it back and bring this back. And what you'll notice is we've got a little bit of a blue cast in it. This will show up later. And that's because our blue is slightly displaced from the other. So as we adjust, we end up with more blue in it. Luma, if I go back to Luma, is set up to keep the colour the same, but just adjust only the uh, levels themselves without uh, affecting the colour. So that's how we would basically adjust it with levels, uh, I mean with curves, my apologies. And I said I was going to do four, so I've done contrast, levels and curves. The last one I was going to play with, I'll do it as a field adjustment layer, is going to be clarity. Now clarity is a bit of an odd one for some people. What clarity is, is it adjusts local area contrast. It doesn't adjust the contrast over the whole image. It just adjusts the contrast in local area. So where we have a contrast change, say here we have a light cloud and dark cloud, it will make the light cloud lighter, the dark cloud light darker, but it won't be affecting the other areas over here. It'll do those as a different uh, 
exercise so if we wind up the clarity we can see that that comes up fairly well and possibly a bit if we go back and have a look at our curves we had a bit more dramatic so possibly a bit like contrast we may actually want to do that as a second run to get the intensity that we want um, that's probably about where I want to go to so we'll just do a quick label of these so we know what we've done with them useful to label those right so let's just go back and have a quick look at the results of each of our adjustments that we're going to look at. We've done contrast, levels, curves and clarity. So turn off contrast we had to do in a couple of stages. That works OK. Levels, single one stage, produce quite a good result. Curves, simple one stage, a good result and if we look at levels had the slight blue shift curves didn't so having the ability to adjust purely the luma component in curves in this package means that I'm not adju uh, adjusting the color whereas even with contrast you can see that there is a color shift compared with what the curves did. So some subtle differences. The last one we did was clarity. Clarity, if we look at our curves, hasn't had much colour shift, but it's produced, you could say more detail, it's produced a more striking uh, differences and patterning in the clouds. If we look at that, it's a little bit hard to do it as a, uh, a simple double compare but it has got a different effect on the clouds and often clarity uh, you do the main effect with one of the others whether you, you want to do it with contrast levels or curves and then you add clarity on top of that just to bring out a bit more of the patterning in, in objects well that's all I was intending to do in Capture One, we'll move on to the next package. Here we are in Affinity Photo. So I'd better open my image. And we've loaded our image. Now Affinity Photo, we'll just look at our layers element. Now it works with adjustment layers very similar to the layers we have just seen in Capture One and we want to add an adjustment so we'll start off with our contrast and contrast comes with brightness which is a good thing because we saw that often if we're adjusting the contrast we may also have to adjust the brightness this time our histogram is in our top left uh, top right corner the opposite side to what it was in capture one that's uh, neither here nor this let's wind up our contrast and see how we go uh, we'll probably want to bring down a little bit of brightness and I reckon that could do with some more so we'll open up another contrast layer and bring our contrast there okay so again it's taken us two layers with contrast to get the impact that uh, we might like so we'll just turn those two off. Okay, we'll now move on to levels. And 
select our levels you see our levels control is very similar only this time instead of adjusting on the histogram we adjust lower down so as we pull out whites back and we pull our blacks up and uh, very rapidly we get to where we want so done with levels it also has curves so we'll have a look at curves and again we can bring our whites back and bring our blacks up to get the effect we want very quick and easy as I said curves levels contrast so back to our plain one now we can always try our clarity trick that we did in Affinity uh, is sorry in Capture One so we can have a look at clarity and ramp it up not a large effect so we'll try a second clarity and ramp it up and we start to see now what we've done is brought out a huge amount of texture in the cloud more than bringing out the contrast so clarity in this is not really doing what we want So let's just remove our clarity ones. But clarity is actually an extension of what is used for sharpening. So if we try our unsharpening mask, which is meant for sharpening, and normally we just have know one or two pixels for sharpening but if we take this right up we now start to get a clarity effect so that's very much like the clarity we we're getting with the basic clarity control now while I've run out of room on that control I can come up here and if I can get it highlighted type in say no, missed it. Type in say 400. And it's looking a lot better. And we could even go to 600 on this. And run it up. And you can see I've got quite a lot of control in this one. And we can bring it up there. Not quite as good as say our curves or levels have a look at our levels and doing it with clarity particularly you can see this highlight here is starting to burn out so we'd probably need to do some brightness adjustments as well as the clarity but there's a way of simulating clarity uh, or a similar clarity or extending the clarity level and aiding it as a contrast producer so again different package affinity photo very much like Photoshop and we have been able to do it with our brightnesses or a brightness adjustment our levels adjustment our curves adjustment and even our clarity adjustment so very easy very simple package and very powerful we'll move on to the next one the last package I was going to look at was the GIMP the GIMP is slightly different we don't have adjustment layers so if I was to come along and select our contrast then I can certainly adjust the contrast and the brightness 
and if I do an OK, I don't have a layer that I can do it on. So let's undo that. So for this one what we're going to do is duplicate the layer and we'll relabel it so we know what the labour is. Label this. And on this layer we will now come back and we'll do our contrast adjustment. Get the contrast up, get our brightness where we want, oh, and our histogram is over there so I can probably chuckling but notice with this one I have much more adjustment range in the contrast I can do it with one go so that's got our contrast layer going so we'll, as I said we'll need to duplicate it um, and this one we will do is our levels Turn off our contrast layer so we can see what's happening we're doing on our levels. We'll uh, run up our levels control I'm working with an old pad, uh, drawing pad which is a little bit touchy. Now in Capture 1 our output levels are on top in GIMP it's a separate bit so we don't want to adjust our output levels, we want it to go from full black to full white it's only our input levels so we can grab that and adjust that back and we can bring our blacks up and that'll do it so levels Turn that off, duplicate our background again, and we'll do this one with curves. So come across, select our curves, what was happening on double bouncing, so it's implementing when I haven't actually done anything and again we can adjust our curves over. Now the other ones had little drop downs to guide us this one we've got to do it by the grid and adjust it that way that'll do. So curves, so very quickly we've had the same controls, we've got our contrast or our levels or our curves all giving us similar results. Uh, we'll do our duplication and uh, we'll call it clarity. But there's a problem here because if we look around through the menus we find that there isn't a clarity control. So like we had to resort to in Affinity Photo we will have to use the sharpening uh, controls classically known as the unsharp mask. Now the radius was the one, you see it's really designed for low numbers but we can take that right up. Now what did we use before? It's about 600 I think we ended up with so I'll go up to 600-ish and we'll adjust the amount up just trying to judge 
bottle work. Okay, so now what we've got our original, our contrast adjustment with the contrast control, our adjustment using levels, our adjustment using curves, and our adjustment using a clarity, or in this case uh, using the sharpening mask as a clarity adjuster because it's doing our local contrast adjustment and it gives a slightly different result than we get with the others we're getting just a bit more detail and patterning in the clouds which can be good or bad but we're getting very close to burning out in the highlights and are getting quite dark in the shadows where in this one it's a, a more subtle sharp grading using our curves or our levels or our contrast so there you go multiple packages very similar results uh, and very similar controls this is the image I decided I liked in the end it was done in capture one most of the adjustments were done with levels the detail of the clouds are enhanced with clarity and the sky was made to look colder and more winter like by adjusting the colour temperature. So that's all for today's video and I hope you enjoyed it.